down here where it says my apps. Some of you from week one or from last week, we didn't talk about Visible Body much last week, but we, from week one, and some of you are poking around in Visible Body, you may have, have uh, uh, downloaded a couple of these apps or one of the apps. Uh, I don't know. If you haven't and you have the room on your phone or on your, your tablet, uh, by all means, uh, I would download those. And you have those for life. Well, now that you have Visible Body, those apps are yours forever. You have access to this particular courseware, I believe, for two years. So, uh, But anyhow, you can access these apps uh, in computer version form if, if you're using a, a laptop or a PC by again just going uh, scrolling down along the sidebar here and, and finding where it says my apps and this is the one the first one anatomy and physiology that we're going to be using uh, this week now in, in future weeks we will be uh, exploring uh, the human anatomy atlas a little bit more and we'll also be looking at uh, the muscles uh, here uh, in a couple of uh, weeks. So anyhow, I open, uh, see, ah, so it's visible body, maybe not zoom, because it seems kind of choppy. I don't know, I'm just gonna keep going and we're gonna roll with it. But visible body is a bulky, meaty kind of a program. So if I do start kind of getting a little bit glitchy or pausey, that's probably uh, what it is. But again, I think that uh, you can follow along without too much uh, trouble. So anyway, I clicked on that first app, visible body app. So it'll pop that open. Okay. Um, introduction, cells and tissue, uh, cell functions, uh, cell types. Uh, you can certainly uh, go through that. I think it, it recommends uh, that, you, that you do that. So, um, but again, it says watch the video 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. So uh, you're basically going to start at this first section, and you just click that to open. Let me go back to the menu. I want to show you a couple things real quick because there are some icons that maybe confuse you a little bit. Um, it could be intimidating. Along the side, there's a little play icon. That simply means that this section is going to have a video or is a video. And then the, the box uh, means that there's going to be some sort of, of uh, manipulation tool. There's going to be, in essence, kind of like a 3D uh, tool. So the, the cube represents three dimensions. So uh, when you see this cube, it simply means that um, you can sort of play around with uh, some of the um, uh, layers of the body. Okay, and then if it's a, a screen that looks like this, it's simply just a, a screen uh, with some, some uh, uh, usually a, an image or an illustration and some information to go with it. So first of all, that's what all of that stuff means along the side in case you, you were wondering. Um, the other thing about this anatomy physiology app, it's extremely helpful. I, I, I hope that all of you, well, you will spend time in here after tonight when you're working on these exercises, but also as you're working on your portfolios or working on exam preparation, don't forget about this app because it is, students do find it to be very beneficial, very useful because it does have uh, excellent descriptions as well as, so like when you're filling out your key term uh, descriptions, you may use this in, in, instead of um, open stacks. You may prefer this. I don't know. So just, I guess what I'm saying is don't neglect this or, or, or fail to, to use it because it is very helpful. Um, so we're going to be over on one through four, even though tissue, which is part four, we're not going to do anything with that. We're going to do uh, tissue and integumentary system next week. So next week will be four, five, and six. Um, so anyway, get acclimated and now is your time to get acclimated a little bit more uh, with this app that goes with Visible Body. So again, you just click on it uh, on the uh, uh, section. We're going to start at 1.1. Click play uh, to watch the video. Uh, when you're done, click the, dot, the over arrow. And again, it takes us to, to a page then that now shows us uh, that we have three dimensions. So we, uh, if you have a touch screen, uh, you can manipulate uh, um, the positioning and movement of the body. 
Um, you can click on each one of these are, are highlighted, simply meaning that you can click on one and it'll pull up that system. Uh, the nerve cells transmit signals. You're gonna be coming back to this because you have questions in your uh, lab that address exactly what we're looking at. So, um, so again, you're gonna to wanna, to, you're gonna use this to answer the questions in the first part of your visible body lab. Okay, bone cell support bone. Okay, well, let's, let's start on that one. The other thing I wanna show you that tells us something, that's good, uh, but of what bone cells are for, but we also can click this little book and it'll give us a little bit more info. So anyway, just a side note, uh, I, I want you to, to uh, dive in and, and uh, check this out and, and, and again, use it as a, as, a, as a helpful tool as you do these visible body lab activities. Okay, so let me go back really quickly. So, so we're doing 1.1, uh, 1.2, 1.3. And then there are a couple questions that go with it. Okay. In fact, let me go back. Oops, that's not the right. This one here. Okay. Read through this and that answers the very first question. So these questions are and you can answer them. It's kind of the point by doing uh, the going through this uh, anatomy physiology app through visible body. How many different types of cells are in the human body? It tells you right right on top. Okay, so you watch the little video. You'll get a little more info. Go to the May next I? slide. Yeah, go ahead, Craig. Where do we find that again? Because you obviously just show us an answer. Well, that's good. I'm hoping to. So I'm on, uh, okay, uh, 1.2 cell functions. You, okay, so, so go back go to, to 1.1 cells and tissue overview. I'm using two screens right now. All right. <laughs> I got it. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. And they kind of flow like this, this activity that you'll do with visible body, it kind of flows in the same way. Now that you, there is a, the next question is kind of a, just a subjective, um, just wanting to know kind of where you're at with cells and, and what uh, or your previous knowledge experience with cells is. Um, and then number two uh, goes through that, that next one to uh, 1 1.2. So if we go to 1.2, you've got bone cells, blood cells, nerve cells, muscle cells, skin cells, sex cells. We go over here, we've got nerve cells, blood cells, bone cells, muscle cells, uh, and then the two sex cells, sperm and egg cells. So again, it gives you a basic um, function of each of those. So for bone cells, you can put supports bone. Blood cells carry oxygen and so on. If you want more info, again, you just click the little booklet and it'll pop that info right up for you. Okay. So you'll be able to go through and, and type in some of those essential functions. And then the other thing for number three, looking at those exact same cells, um, just maybe some observations of, of what you, you maybe read in through here. Um, maybe just what you, what you know about uh, cells. Here, here's some cell types. Uh, just gives you kind of a, a bigger uh, illustration of what these cells look like. Um, whoops, let me bring this over here. That's way down there. I'll bring it right here. There we go. Okay, so um, again, there's no right or wrong answer necessarily for these. It's, it's kind of what's your own, what, what do you think about these? What's your own take? What observations do you make that they're similar? Um, do they all have a nucleus? Do they all have a cell membrane? Do they all um, have cytoplasm? Do they, you know, okay. and, and how might they be different? Now, as you approach these couple of questions, A and 3A and 3B, I don't necessarily want you to look at all six of them and, and say all six of these are similar in that blah, 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 or 
for the letter B. All six of these have differences. I, I, it's more of, of pick a couple of them. Pick, pick uh, the sperm cell and the egg cell and talk about how they're similar uh, and how they're different. Pick, you know, sperm cells have a flagellum or a tail. Egg cells don't. So you can, you can do, again, this is your experience. I'm not looking for um, uh, everything has to be in the small, tiny compartmentalized box that I created. And if you don't have the right key, you're just not getting in. And that's, that's not the way to approach this. It's simply just your, your experience by, with how you, you can link and, and draw and infer uh, and deduce some similarities that you might have found other than that they're all cells uh, and, and how might they be a little bit different even between each other. So anyway, the letter C, uh, a somatic cell and a sex cell. Uh, I'm going to just tell you this right now. I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but I want to be uh, clear about it. Uh, somatic cells are all the cells of the body. Somatic means body. Sex cells are simply talking about the sperm cell and the egg cell. We call those gametes. Gamete is spelled like the word game, G-A-M-E, and then T-E-S on the end, gametes. Okay? Um, gametes simply means uh, the egg and the sperm. Okay? Those two cells, the sex cells, are what we call haploid. H-A-P-L-O-I-D, haploid, meaning half. They have the 23 chromosomes, whereas the somatic cells are the body cells that go through mitosis exclusively. They have 46 chromosomes when we're talking about human cells. Okay? So somatic cells are 46 chromosomes. We call them diploid or diploid. Sex cells are 23 chromosomes. We call those haploid, meaning kind of like half. Okay, uh, four primary features of most uh, human cells. Okay, so as we, we kind of travel onward, um, we, we segue into uh, 2.1. Uh, there it goes. All right, so 2.1 is going to take us to the next little section here. Um, list four primary aspects or features of most human cells. And um, all I'm looking there for, for there, and again, this is in the slideshow from the other day, uh, but we're looking at like cell membrane, uh, cytoplasm, the nucleus of the cell. And then D, we could just put organelles, all the little organs uh, or organelles. So those are the four main features. Um, and again, if we, when we get into 2.1 parts of a cell, uh, it's going to uh, show those or pop those up for us. There we go. Plasma membrane, cytoplasm, organelles, cytosol, nucleus. Now cytosol is part of the cytoplasm. Basically, the cytoplasm is made up of organelles and cytosol. Remember, the organelles are kind of the, 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 the solid structures that are floating or immersed inside of, uh, they're floating in cytosol. And combined, we call that cytoplasm. So four primary aspects would be the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and then you could put organelles uh, or cytosol, uh, either one. Or you could just add a fifth one and put all five of these if you want. But I only need you to do four. Okay. And again, you're maybe noticing if you're watching the, the, the video uh, that it is getting a little glitchy. So I think it's safe to say up to this point, everything's been smooth. And this is about the same point when things got weird with the day group. So I think it's this app that it's, it's, a, it's a beast. So you, you know this if you download it onto your phone or your uh, tablet. So again, when we look at these parts of a cell, well, let me go back over here so we can scoot down. Doop, 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 doop. So there we go, cell parts. So this now is taking us into 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 in that human anatomy and physiology uh, app. 
So it's got, it's got a, a, it has a couple of the uh, images and illustrations that we would see uh, in this uh, visible body. So, uh, or in this uh, human anatomy physiology app. So anyway, uh, most cells have three primary structures. Uh, and then again, we said the cytoplasm or the cytosol and the organelles are part of that cytoplasm. Uh, there are some rare exceptions. So uh, there, there's a, uh, there are a few cells that, that are lacking a nucleus. So uh, the red blood cell specifically, uh, we think about doesn't have a nucleus. So you'll, you'll possibly read about that uh, as well. And then uh, let's see the outer uh, membrane. And, and uh, uh, again, we, we, we called that membrane the phospholipid bilayer. And then uh, we saw that uh, proteins, carbs, and lipids. And, and here's here's your from your quite here you go. Uh, uh, ode to Craig uh, here, uh, glycoprotein. Uh, and you too, Lori, uh, for your email. But uh, glycoprotein. So this is where oftentimes we're going to find some of these these. Uh, macromolecules that have combined. So the outer membrane uh, built of pho primarily, remember that phospholipid bilayer, but we do have other molecules associated with uh, proteins, carbs, and lipids. Uh, cholesterol, right, is a, is a type of lipid. Uh, Man. Go, Craig. So the question asked, though, how do you combine a lipid and a protein to make another macromolecule with the big four, obviously. So who's thinking of these? These are micromolecules, right? Or Ma am I way off base? Well, right I think now? I think I'm thinking how I think you need to um, put on the brakes with the macromolecule verbiage. And just think of a macromolecule as a big being four. A, a big, uh, it doesn't have to be one of these big four. These are okay. examples of I miss that. macromolecules. These just happen to be the big four. There are... Because when you're... There's probably you're, innumerable amounts of macromolecules. When you're talking about mixing a, a lipid with a carb... Uh, like what does that make like a dna glyph or something no, it like i'm thinking makes... about the other three or two okay. macro molecules so here's what i want you to do i i want you to <laughs> i know i'm off base <laughs> no you're not off base at all but here's what i want you to do uh, well i need you to because you you need to is uh, i need you to google glycoprotein glycolipid and lipoprotein and then each one of those, and it'll tell, it'll give you way more information than you'll probably ever need to know. But you still, uh, you, 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 you're putting these puzzle pieces together. So uh, we, get, we get into them in more detail next semester, but it's obviously uh, kind of a burning uh, itch. So, so scratch that itch and go to Google and type lipoprotein. And here's one here, glycoprotein. I will. I already have and, and then what? And then if you, if you want, on, you know, I, don't do it now because we're still kind of going through this. But, well, of but, course. But if you would, um, um, either um, give me extra credit on something yeah i was thinking why don't you uh i will We're on the same page but, uh, <laughs> because i do want to i i I'm I, the love, I love the uh your this is the that critical thinking problem solving like like i you you get something and you want to go further that's exact that thirst and hunger for more is what what we're looking for so so kudos and keep that up but i do also want you to bring bring the knowledge you, you get and that the uh, back to us uh on tuesday um so tuesday. Are, you, are you going to be joining us tuesday or you can email absolutely me. okay or you can or do both shoot me an email what's the assignment um just those three things uh glycoprotein glycolipid and lipoprotein so the three mac the three let's not think about nucleic acids right now let's just focus on these three proteins carbs and fats Glycoprotein, lipoprotein, and glycolipid. 
glycolipid. Mm -hmm. So we basically just combined uh, each one with each other one time. Um, and the bigger word, like the root word, so protein, see like this one says glycoprotein. Um, that means the protein part uh, is the, the base, if you will, the foundation. The glyco is the attachment of it. So like a glyco. Uh, what's the root word of glyco? Glucose. Uh, it's Latin, right? Yeah, it means sugar. Sugar, okay. For glucose. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, it's, well, there you go, Craig. There's your assignment right there. All three, you, you guys, all, all of you. I got uh, it. For six, I'll share it. For letter A, B, and C, and then Tuesday, share them with us, and then we'll, the, we can. So anyway, yeah. So for A, B, and C, those are three you could choose, and you could choose other ones when you look at a plasma membrane. I don't know if this is going to give us as much info. Yeah, glycolipids, uh, cholesterol molecules. So it'll give us a little bit more info in there. Uh, your, um, when you go into your open stacks as well under uh, cell membrane, there's some good info in there as well regarding uh why we need even it has some nice illustrations as well about how these glycos uh here we go here's a glycolipid attached uh so it's a lipid with a carbohydrate attached so one of these lipids in the in the membrane has glucose attached to it or carbohydrate we see a protein remember in the plasma membrane it's primarily lipids with proteins embedded in there. And these proteins act as channels or, or carriers or um, pumps, something associated with moving things into or out of the cell. So glycoprotein uh, just simply means we've got one of these proteins with carbohydrate attached. And then notice too, in between this bilayer, we have cholesterol. Uh, built in there. So those are kind of the three that I'm really looking for. Could you write other stuff? You absolutely can put whatever you want in there that that's related to uh, items that may be found within the cell membrane. But this is really what I'm looking for. Uh, inter you can put integral membrane protein, you can put uh, glycoprotein, cholesterol, and then down here, you're just going to give me a, a function, uh, a basic function of each one, like cholesterol. So that's the why. I think that's what, what you're asking too, Craig, is why, why, is a glyco why, why do we have a glucose and a protein combined? What does that do for anybody? Well, you're going to find out and you're going to put that in here for number seven. Does it have a relation to body lifting? I, I would say so to yeah. a degree. Absolutely. Um, just remember, guys, uh, for all of us, when we see glyco, gluco, uh, something to do with sugar or carbohydrate, that simply is, is cellular fuel. So there's not much structure involved. When we do see a structure involved, like what we see here, this kind of long chain looking little beaded deal, uh, if we were to zoom in on that, we would see these are going to have shapes such as like uh, uh, hexagonal or pentagonal shapes. They're going to be six-sided and five-sided uh, sugars, and they're going to be linked together. So it's, so it's forming kind of like what they call like a polysaccharide, and, and it's going to be attached to, to one of these other molecules. And if we see that, it, and again, it, it's, it's an, it, we can almost immediately go to, um, there must be a demand for energy, for cellular fuel. So we would maybe see more glycoproteins and glycolipids with like skeletal muscle cells, talking about working out in that. So because skeletal muscle cells, cardiac cells too, right? They require a lot more ATP, a lot more energy. So when a cell requires more energy, that's where we might see some glycolipids and glycoproteins lingering around uh, to, to, to basically be one of those sources. Uh, um, 
it can help with um, recognition. They, they can be almost like part of that, like, like uh, antigen. Um, that's another thing you could put for, for one of those too, is an antigen. We find those on cell membranes. So sometimes these act as like surface um, connectors too, uh, um, communication wires. They almost look like little, uh, you know, little antennae or something, right? Coming off of the top of the cell membrane. So there's also some communicative aspects involved. And so uh, when certain items, uh, enzymes or other uh, molecules, molecules come into to contact with the cell, they may come into contact first with one of these glycoproteins or glycolipids, and then um, that could trigger then a chemical reaction involving energy, which then triggers uh, one of these channels or portals to open up uh, for that molecule to be able to enter the cell. So, so anyhow, uh, 3.1 is where in OpenStax is where you're going to find some of this information as well. So, um, so yeah, uh, other than cell mem, by, by the way, too, we will, we see glycoproteins and, and glycolipids and lipoproteins. We see them in other areas too than just cell membranes. Uh, so you, that's something else that you might uh, find in your, in your searches. Um, the next thing uh, that I want to get into uh, a little bit is, and that that again, as we as we follow along in back into 2.1 and so on in, in the Anatomy and Physiology app, um, again you can click on each of those. It'll give you some tidbits on on each one. Um, goes into again a little bit of detail on the plasma membrane. Okay, and here's more of those structures. We can see that phospholipid bilayer, an, an integral membrane protein. It, it's a channel, so we can get uh, uh, different items passing through. Uh, some of these, again, are closed up for um, uh, and are specific to specific uh, molecules or chemicals that are trying to enter into the cell. We also notice when we look at this phospholipid bilayer, we can see that we have uh, what's called the polar head and the fatty acid tail of this, of this bilayer. The fatty acid tail is what makes this the lipid aspect of the cell membrane. And that's going to be the center, kind of the middle of the double layer of the cell membrane. This is what we call hydrophobic. So water uh, does not mesh with this center area of the bilayer. You guys all see that? It says hydrophobic, fatty acid tail. So this area of the cell membrane uh, is hydrophobic. So how do I get water to go from outside the cell to inside of the cell? I have to build some sort of a pore or a channel for water to pass through uh, and pass back out. Um, so this a polar head, this is the phosphate part. Uh, so this is a phospholipid bilayer. So two layers of phosphates with lipid tails. The phosphate portion or the head is going to be hydrophilic. So water is going to be uh, very much attracted to these polar uh, heads of these phosphates. Same with the inside of the cell. Okay, the polar heads, hydrophilic, meaning there's an affinity to water. Okay, so you can look a little bit at that and then here's the the next little section in your in your packet talks a little bit about transport uh, mechanisms sorry about that so just a couple of, of, of questions about transport mechanisms um, one gets into movement uh, uh, from high concentration to low concentration now the mm -hmm. first so you're going to want to watch this video for sure And then um, the video is going to discuss the basics of passive uh, and versus active transport. I also discuss these in the in uh, Tuesday's lecture. Uh, passive transport is diffusion, uh, what we call simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion, osmosis, which is moving fluid to dilute an area. 
So osmosis moves fluid to dilute an area, whereas diffusion, whether it's simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion just means that we need an extra helper. Uh, we see this with glucose. Glucose needs a facilitator to enter into a cell. Uh, so diffusion, regardless of what type of diffusion, means particles generally, or gases, some, some form of matter is moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. In other words, we're moving uh, the, the matter, the, whatever form of matter it is, we're moving it from where there's a lot yeah. of the substance to where there's a lot, to where there's less of a substance. Sure, Craig, go ahead. Oxygen and hydrogen are the only ones that can cross the cell membrane or something like that, right? Well, to sort uh, to of, an extent, right? Yeah, the, correct. Without the use of sure, like gases or certain gases, exactly that we don't need anything, right? They're going to diffuse right through the membrane, absolute or nitrogen. Or facilitated diffuse. Now, facilitate. So that's what you're talking about is what we call simple diffusion, where we're yep. just going to get gases are just going to go from a lot of gas to where there isn't as much gas. We see this with heat, right? Heat goes from high heat to Absolutely. lower heat, right? We saw that last week with hyperthermia. Um, so um, facilitated diffusion is the same principle, but usually we're dealing with bigger molecules. So they need a little extra help. They might need a channel protein, uh, some a protein sort of, channel. What are those in? Uh, uh, I'm those sorry. Are, no, here I'm, 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 I'm off right now. What are those protein channels? They're the here. Can you see the screen? Yeah. The, okay. Here's absolutely. the here's a protein channel. It's basically they call them integral, meaning they're integrated in proteins. And sometimes you'll even hear hear them, and I refer to them in the in the video Tuesday as integral membrane. Protein. These are facilitated diffusion. And these assist, yep, these are what we would maybe consider to be like a facilitator, a helper for the, the diffusion. The integral tools. protein. Yep, okay. the, you need that oh, yeah. integral protein. I heard that. Yep. Um, and sometimes we'll see these with uh, like an enzyme uh, may need to, to get into a cell. So they're going to have a, almost like a lock and key mechanism where you've got uh, the substrate. Like insulin and glucose yeah, type of deal? Absolutely. So insulin is kind of the key to get glucose to, to be uh, uh, able to pass through one of these integral membrane proteins or protein channels. Yep. Some of them are chemical gated, so you need like a special chemical. So that's the insulin one. It's called a chemical gated channel. So a chemical is the key and then it unlocks the door. Some of them are called voltage gated, meaning I just need an electricity burst or a, an ionic uh, uh, charge that'll, that'll alter the, the ability to close or open the channel. Um, those are the, the but they're all facilitated biggest. diffusion, right? But typically, we would think of yep, facilitated diffusion is the actual because they need help of the movement. Yep, and they need help. So yeah, we generally would see an integral protein with facilitated diffusion, absolutely. And then um, with osmosis, we also we don't necessarily meet, need um, a helper per se. Don't need anything we, of that. We still need some sort of. We call it a. We if we put the. You guys probably all remember the and and know the word uh, water in Spanish is agua. So we would see we call the pour. Uh, uh, so and that comes from the Latin, which is aqua. So we put the word aqua in front of the word pour. And we have what's called an aquapore or aquaporin. Oftentimes we'll see things end in the letters I-N. Pay attention to that throughout this semester and next semester. A lot of words are going to end with the letters I-N. And when I look at the screen right now, I can see one word that ends in I-N, and that's protein. Protein. So good. So what we see, if we add an I-N onto something, it simply means it's a type of protein or it's made of protein. So if I take this E off of pore and put an I-N, and then I put aqua in front of it, it says aquaporin. That simply means uh, a pore 
that's made up of protein, which we already know it is because most structures in the body are going to be made of protein, but they want us to know that for sure. And then it's, it's for water. So we put aqua in front of it. Aquaporin. It almost seems too simple, right? Like a, 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 a pore for moving water in a, through a cell membrane is called what? It's called an aqua, aqua pours in. So, uh, so anyway, you'll see that question. I know it comes up from time to time. So, um, so osmosis is, is moving water instead of moving stuff. So we can either move the solids or the gases, that's diffusion, or we can move water. And if we move water, we're moving water to dilute an area. So water always moves to where there's more stuff. So we have two options. We'll have multiples. We'll stick with two. When we, we have a situation outside of a cell versus inside of a cell where we have a lot of stuff on one side or the other. So we'll say uh, we have a lot of stuff on the outside of the cell. And stuff could be sodium. It could be chloride. It could be calcium. It could be just about anything. But we'll just use the generic word stuff for now. So there's a lot of stuff on the outside of the cell and not as much of that same stuff on the inside of the cell. So right away, we're not at an equilibrium. So we have an imbalance of stuff uh, to fluid ratio. So inside of the cell, we've got five items uh, of stuff for one liter of water. And then outside the cell, I've got 500 items of stuff for one liter of water. So I have my, my water's the same. I have a liter of water on the outside and a liter of water on the inside, but the stuff, that's the problem. So I have two options to get my ratios balanced or what we call equilibrium met. I can move the stuff. So I could move 250. Uh, well, wait, I get, well, let's, so let's say, I can move 250 from outside to inside. So now I have 250-ish on the inside and I have 250-ish on the outside. And I still have one liter of water on the outside, one liter of water on the inside. I'm at what we call equilibrium. I have 250 to one ratio of stuff to water on the outside of the cell. And then I have a 250 to one ratio of stuff to water on the inside of the cell. That's what we call equilibrium. So all we did with that was just move stuff. So we just said, hey, there's way too much outside. Let's just move it inside. That's, that's diffusion, or it could be simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion. That's called moving something from a high concentration to a low concentration. My other option is I could move water from inside the cell to outside of the cell. So I could dilute the area. So I have 500 items outside of the cell, uh, only five inside of the cell, but I have the same amount of water on both sides. So why don't I take all this water that's inside the cell and, and flush it out of the cell to dilute all of that extra stuff. That's what osmosis is. Osmosis is diluting uh, an area where there's an excess of, of material, whatever that, that material might be. So I want to I'll, I'll pull up uh, uh, kind of what they're showing as an example of a solution. Um, we see, again, a, a lot of verbiage. We see this hyper, and then we see iso, and then we see hypo. Now, this tonicity has to do with, so tonic, has to do with the amount of substance or the amount of stuff, the amount of solute in the solution. So when I have a hypertonic solution, it means I have an excess or hyper amount of uh, of solute outside of the cell. So remember, water is going to move. So when we're dealing with osmosis, because maybe I can't move the stuff, if that option is not available, maybe I don't have a cell membrane that has the right kind of carriers that'll allow the substance to diffuse. So then what I do instead of the, or, or maybe I just can't, it, we're not diffusing fast enough. So it's easier for the body to dilute the area 
So if we're in a hypertonic situation, which would mean if I have a high amount of sodium outside of the cells in the plasma, then what the, your red blood cells will do is try to dilute the area where there's all of that stuff. So when we see a hypertonic solution and we immerse a cell uh, into that hypertonic solution, water will actually leave the cell to go to dilute all of that area outside of the cell. And so what that can do is it can cause the cell uh, to shrivel up or to shrink. If I have, we'll skip ISO for now, if I have a, the opposite effect, so now I have a cell that is in a solution that has, has nothing, uh, has limited to no uh, saline, for instance, or sodium. Uh, so the inside of the cell now has a higher concentration of sodium than the outside of the cell does. So what happens is water will rush in to dilute the area where there's more stuff. Okay, so that's uh, gonna that would potentially cause the cell to rupture uh, or to burst. So a hypotonic again, hypo means less than or lower than. Uh, so, so not enough solute. So that means in the solution. So that means there's more solute inside of the cell, and so the water can rush in and cause that cell to lice. Now, if we have equilibrium established, so I have a five percent uh, saline solution and a five percent uh, inside of the cell uh, environment then water is going to just, we're in equilibrium. So we've got just kind of a steady flow of water in and out, water in and out. All those uh, pores are open and, and we can, you know, we see a nice steady equilibrium. This is where the body is trying to be at all times, right? We certainly don't want to see a condition or have a condition where our red blood cells are shriveling up or our red blood cells are exploding. So our bodies, in particularly, in particular, our kidneys, as well as other organs, certainly, the heart and the, the lungs, and, uh, your lymphatic system, your, even your liver, your digestive system, uh, are, everything's working together. Your, even your integumentary system to maintain equilibrium, to maintain fluid balance and homeostasis. And so isotonicity is what we're always trying to attain, achieve, and then, and then maintain. So the kidneys help a lot with that. So sodium balance, uh, potassium balance, all of these play a major role uh, in, in uh, maintenance of homeostasis. So um, these are, again, just teaser trailers, tiny snippets of what you're going to be getting yourselves into uh, when you get to advanced AMP. So, um, so anyway, there are a, a couple of questions on that. Um, oh, so that's all passive transport, by the way. Uh, active transport means ATP or energy uh, has to be involved. So um, active transport mechanisms are going to involve a pump. And that pump is going to be uh, moving substances against its concentration, against the concentration gradient. In other words, we're moving items from, uh, from where there are a low concentration of items towards a higher concentration of items. So it's, it's counterintuitive to be trying to move uh, something from a low concentration to a high concentration. It's already crowded. Why would I want to crowd it even more? Well, we see this uh, frequently throughout the body when we're trying to get uh, um, calcium back to where it's supposed to be uh, when muscles are relaxing. We see this happening with, uh, with sodium being pushed back out of a cell and potassium being brought back into a cell. Potassium lives in the cell in high amounts. Sodium lives outside of the cell in high amounts. Well, when sodium goes inside of a cell, which is totally normal, uh, how do we get sodium to go back outside of the cell? Because there's a ton of sodium naturally and normally outside of the cell sodium isn't going to just diffuse out of the cell because there's it, it, sodium doesn't 
nothing moves from low concentration to high concentration unless we involve a pump. So the sodium potassium pump is going to be embedded in the cell membrane. It's another integral membrane protein. It's a different, it's a, it's a pump. And that pump, just like all pumps, they require energy or ATP in order to function. So, um, so anyway, active transport process involves ATP, which is an energy molecule. And it always involves moving things from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So keep that in mind as you're doing number eight. Uh, number nine uh, is, an, oh, the other type of active transport is going to involve what we call vesicles or vehicles inside of a cell. And we'll see these in just a second. Our little vesicles or little vehicles are these little uh, green jobbers right here. And, and I believe uh, just a, a little bit up above this, there's an image here of these transport vesicles. Okay, so that's what's going on with number nine there is transport vesicles. These also require ATP. If you take the S out of vesicle and, and put an H in there, you have the word vehicle. And these are transport vehicles that are going to zoom around inside of the cell, picking up debris, picking up uh, packaged goods, picking up enzymes, uh, picking up all kinds of items uh, for delivery potentially out of the cell. So a lot of times these transport vesicles will kind of fuse with the cell membrane and then they'll spit out or release whatever they're carrying. They call that exit or exocytosis. Simply means the process of something exiting a cell. So transport vesicles uh, use ATP just like all vehicles need some sort of energy. Uh, these guys use ATP to cruise around uh, between the, the endoplasmic reticulum and the rough ER, as well as this, which is what we call the Golgi apparatus. So these transport vesicles are pinched off little vehicles uh, that, that come off of this Golgi apparatus, which is kind of like an Amazon warehouse or a UPS hub. Uh, this is the, the Golgi apparatus is the packaging uh, and shipping center uh, of the cell. So there's always little vehicles coming in and leaving that Golgi apparatus. Okay, so let's leave transport, and, or well, let's transport away from transport. Uh, we're almost done, guys, which is good because we're almost out of time anyway. This last little section, or there's a couple of sections here, deal primarily with cell structures. And this is where I want your focus to be really uh, for, for what we've been talking about and, and, and moving forward are these organelles. Uh, so you're, you're gonna wanna go through and, and look at and, and uh, analyze these different organelles. You're gonna wanna do your, uh, you know, your definitions for these are gonna come right out of, of, of uh, the anatomy physiology uh, app. They also, you can also find that information in OpenStax as well. Um, and again, these highlighted purple jobbers here, you can click on those and it'll highlight the cytoskeleton. And then if you click on the little booklet, it'll give you some information about the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeletons is a collective of these microfilaments, intermediate filaments, microtubules, centrosomes, centrioles, all of these under here are parts of the cytoskeleton. So it discusses that in more detail here. So I want you to go through and, and analyze that. And I, if I click microfilaments, it'll highlight the, the specific ones in blue. And then microtubules, it'll uh, highlight those in blue. So it'll distinguish and talk a little bit about uh, what each of these are. What is a centrosome? What are centrioles inside of the, the uh, uh, centrosome? And then we move on from that and we get into this endoplasmic reticulum. And again, if you haven't watched it, I would encourage you to go back and watch the video from Tuesday. Um, it talks a lot of, uh, about a lot of what, uh, what we're going through uh, tonight. So uh, again, you can, you can manipulate and maneuver uh, this cell uh, and any of these images all, of, all you want. And again, if you have augmented reality capabilities, I believe some of these uh, on your tablet may have uh, that 
uh, as well. And that's more for going to be for uh, the uh, anatomy, um, uh, human anatomy 2020 app. You'll, you'll find that augmented reality. So anyway, this uh, gives you some info about uh, all of these cell organelles. So as you go through these, there's the Golgi, and it talks about lysosomes and peroxisomes, and then the nucleus talks about uh, the DNA and the in the chromosomes, the nuclear envelope, okay, the the nucleus itself. This fluid in here is called nucleoplasm. It's a fluid inside of the nucleus. Okay, and then we've got the mitochondria, the little energy uh, beans. Okay, the ATP, those are the powerhouses of the cell. Those are always associated with glucose and carbohydrates. Okay, and then the ribosomes, there's those R's again. You look at ribosomes, rough ER. What makes the ER rough? The presence of ribosomes. And those deal with proteins and protein synthesis. Okay, I'm going to stop there at 2.15 because 2 through 2.14 will help you answer those. Okay, and then number 12 gets into uh, a few diseases and disorders. So again, I want you to, uh, and, and even just reading about, reading the definitions I have regarding these uh, pathologies, you may be able to glean some information off of these. Well, we already know Tay-Sachs is lysosomes from, from your uh, portfolio one. I'm not gonna give it away though. Um, so look these up and, and link them with uh, some of these uh, cell structures. Again, it gives you some idea and, and immerses you a little bit further uh, into, um, into applicability aspects of understanding cellular structures and functions. And what goes wrong when, or what happens when these, these structures are, are dysfunctional. So, um, so anyway, uh, lastly, My arrow disappeared, my cursor arrow, so there it is. All right, so, and then lastly, number 13, it says, please take the three quizzes in visible body. So I'm gonna show, show you those in just a second. Uh, and it shows you how to access those, those quizzes. I don't think it's, it's difficult for you to, to find those, but I do want you, want you to, to know how to locate those because these other things you don't have to do in, in the actual visible body. So I'll pull that up in just a second. Okay, let me go back into this really briefly. So when we look at, at um, this anatomy and physiology app, uh, again, you're gonna wanna look at one point in the introduction, and then you're gonna wanna go through number two, and again, it, it follows right down the line with your, um, with your visible body lab activity that you're gonna do this week. Now, once you get to 2.15 or 2.14, 2 you're done really with this app. Um, however, if you're feeling spunky, um, you can go through because we're going to look, we're going to use some of this and look at some of this in advance next semester. Cellular respiration, proteins, protein synthesis, transcription, translation, codons. We're going to be doing some of this next semester, but you can look at it now if you want. And then three, the cell life cycle. I don't ask you any uh, homework questions for the visible body lab because I really want you to focus on uh, organelles and cell structures uh, with this lab. Now, one of the quizzes you're going to do, um, and I'll explain that in just a second, does relate to some of these items. The lecture from Tuesday does discuss a few aspects of mitosis. We discussed some of them a little bit tonight. Um, there will be a few questions on your exam that are going to discuss uh, mitosis and cell the cell life cycle. Um, so, uh, you could go through and watch these, uh, especially uh, maybe 3.2 and 3.3. Those I would recommend uh, out of this group because again, we go through these quite a bit, quite extensively in advanced AMP. 
Okay, so what's he talking about with these quizzes? So one th questions one through 12 in your visible body uh, lab assignment for week three are all in here. They all go right in a row. You can answer those without uh, uh, fail. Number 13, uh, you're going to come in to visible body and you're going to click on your assignments. And then you're going to open cells and cellular metabolism. And if you click modules and practice quizzes, which I would recommend you, you, you use that, you can open that um, and it'll, it'll go through in essence, a lot of what we just did. Okay. But it does have a few practice quizzes that you, you you're certainly welcome to take. Um, these two things, cell life cycle, lab activity, cell structure and function lab, activity, you do not have to do anything with those. I wouldn't, don't even click them. Don't muddy your brains with, with, uh, stuff that you think you might have to do. Do not do that. I provided you with the lab activity. That's what we just went through. And that's what's in your blackboard. All you need to do, uh, invisible body certainly is access that anatomy and physiology app as well as go into graded quizzes. And there are three quizzes in here. There are 10 questions each, no time limit, uh, unlimited attempts. You're, you're, so you can take these as many times as you want. The first one is a dissection quiz. What it's gonna do is pull up, and again, it was running sluggish earlier today, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't have to wait too long for that to pull up. Anyway, while it's doing that, I'll explain a few more things. So you're gonna go through and do these. It's gonna populate uh, your numbers or your grades, invisible body. And what I do is it, it's, you either do them or you don't do them. And you, if you do them, you know, I hope you do them to their, you know, I hope if you don't get at least seven or eight out of 10 each time, then I hope you redo it and try to get 10 out of 10 each time. Um, but, uh, uh, but anyhow, that, uh, those answers and that credit is part is, is your number 13, basically your visible bodies are worth 20 points total. And so number 13 is worth say like four points or five points out of the 20. So if you don't do those quizzes, then you're going to, you, you know, you get like a 14 out of 20 or 15 out of, and you do everything else, you'd get like a 14 out of 20, for instance, on the visible, on this assignment. If you do the three quizzes, then you get that, that counts as basically six points uh, towards your visible body lab assignment. And that would put, and then you do all the others, put you at 20 out of 20. So anyway, my point is, see, it's still trying to pull it up. There it goes. Okay, quiz is loading. And, and each time you take it, the questions may be slightly different. So I, I just want to show you what the discussion or, or what the what the uh, dissection one looks like. It's going to have a, uh, down here it says select a microtubule. So um, right away you may be going, oh my gosh, we looked at so much stuff. I don't remember anything. Well, if may you, I? If, yeah, go ahead, Craig. How are you going to remember all this shit? <laughs> the goal is not to remember all of this shit. Trust me. <laughs> this if, is... if you're going to try to remember all of this, then in in uh, in a week, we're rain a few man, hours, right? You are ra yes, you are you, you are rain man. You're on a whole nother level, and you you're probably going to be a Yale I'm having a brain uh, shoot. I guess now. I think really, remember guys, that's a great question or comment. Um, I guess it was a question. Uh, the, remember, you're just simply getting your feet wet. You're getting used to seeing new terms. I don't expect you to remember all of this. What I do expect you though, uh, expect from you is to expose yourself to these new terms and to these new structures. And, and so when we see them next week, and when we see them the week after, and when we see them the week after that, we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time when I say mitochondria. 
for now the that powerhouse of you. cells booms so right away you're good if when i talk about uh protein synthesis and ribosomes and messenger rna and rough er that's a mouthful today but when you hear these things over and over and you see them throughout like muscle memory building, type. It, it's it's exactly what it is it's muscle your your brain is is, is it's not a muscle but it will say it yes is. <laughs> I, but it is it's where your memory is stored so but they're exactly right it's like muscle memory it's repetition and, and it, it's 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 really getting all of you trust me on this if you, when you can allow yourself please allow yourselves to get past the idea of uh, just learning this to take a test, just learning this so I can be judged by Mr. Yoakum, that is, or whoever it is. That's so far from the truth. This, is, this, this information is truly uh, being given and provided to you uh, by you. I'm just a facilitator. You are allowing yourselves and giving yourselves this opportunity to 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 be uh, um, to to allow your minds to grow with with a whole new batch of, of terms and knowledge. But this knowledge isn't just for taking the test. This knowledge is for the the, the test of life. This is what you're going to be using, not just in your your professional realm and and what you're doing uh to 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 pay your bills and to help your patients this is stuff that you're going to use for for your own uh anti-aging for your own health throughout your lives so just take it step by step and and yeah go ahead craig if you're like on a airplane and you know the, this knowledge yeah yeah <laughs> i mean you Someone asked if they're a nurse or a doctor. Well, maybe we're not there yet, but we still know what's going on. Well, instead of just saying I stayed in a Holiday Inn Express, right? You know, those commercials, you can say yeah, I, I took Mr. Yoakum's anatomy and physiology class. <laughs> <laughs> Master Yoakum. So, <laughs> that made me laugh. So, any, so anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I, so you guys are are you guys are going to be locked and loaded uh, trust me you're going to know more uh, than the doctors by the time you're all done with a and p maybe not this semester but after advanced a and p trust me you guys are are going to be blown away at the knowledge you'll have gained you're going to look back uh, even at, at the end of this semester right around december and i'll ask you i'll quiz you i'll pick on you and, and, and when it comes to how you feeling, where you thinking, what, where's your headspace regarding, you know, where were you on, on August 26th? You know, where were you on September 20th? You know, not those exact dates. I'm not that obsessed with, with that, with time and keeping track, but generally speaking, you're going to be like, Oh man, it's, it's going to become second nature. And, and you are in the thick of it. You're in the process of it. So oftentimes you get lost in the journey with, with what's going on right in front of your face. So I'll be here throughout to, to tell you to, to just go ahead and take a deep breath, take a look around and really reflect for a few minutes or a few, however long it takes, a few minutes every day on, on where you are right now, where you were a week ago, where you're going in a, a week from now. And, and I'm telling you, that is motivating to, 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 for, for you, to, to motivation for you to just stick with it and keep going. Make time for this, even if it's a few minutes a day, uh, uh, chip away at it, chip away at it. And, and, and again, throughout the, these next 10, 12 weeks, your minds are good. You, you're not even going to be able to fit into the, through the doorway. When you go to family Christmas, your heads are going to be so blown up. So, um, so anyway, um, Regardless, uh, I think uh, cells, this first three weeks are a bear, you guys, and, and you're, you're pretty much through it. Um, and I, and I, and I, I don't like want the to matrix say, or something. yeah, it's like the matrix, you know, and you, you got through it, but don't think it's leaving you. Don't think you're leaving it. These first three weeks, they are now a part of you. And so you're going to be building on that foundation. You have built 
this nice little solid A and P foundation of what we've been discussing these first three weeks. We're just going to keep building on that same foundation. We're not building this huge skyscraper yet. We're still on the ground level, just, just getting the mortar and the brick and just laying them uh, almost like, like a, a, a nice foundation uh, for, for next semester. Because next semester, we're going to build up a little bit on that foundation we've built here. So again, don't, don't try to, don't get the cart before the horse, but, and at the same time, don't rush through this stuff just so you're making the grade for Mr. Yoakum. I don't give out uh, personal pan pizzas or DQ blizzards for A's. Why do you have to bring um, out pizzas? So, well, uh, does Domino's give pizzas for uh, straight A's, Craig? I, I'm not sure. I, I know, like Pizza boss. Hut. Hey, you know, Pizza Hut does and Dairy Queen, you know, you take your report card in and they'll give you a little mini blizzard. And so that's not what this is about. Those are just, you know, that's just some of the side uh, perks that, that come from getting good grades. But that the good grades come from your hard work and your smart work because you're developing problem solving and critical thinking skills. Like you give so, me that side assignment. That's exactly right. So you guys, um, I'm going to stop the recording. I don't have anything else to.